Hello, mellow fellows, or should I say my dancing minions, it's Terrier, the resident dancing queen, and I am ready to make you all lip sync for your lies for my own personal amusement. If you are familiar with my channel, you know that I like to do Bob's Burgers video essays. I take breaks sometimes to do other topics, but talking about Bob's Burgers is truly one of my favorite subjects. Recently, I talked about Gail, someone who is undeniably funny, but also very polarizing. Most people have a love-hate relationship with her character, and that had me thinking about another character who also has the same love-hate relationship amongst the fans. Someone who is hilarious, but at the same time, equally frustrating at times. Someone who has high points in the show, but at the same time has had some really low points as well. Of course, I am talking about Jimmy Pesto Jr. People have rather strong opinions about Jimmy. People either really hate him or have a love-hate relationship with his character. I rarely see people who fully love his character front to back. Most people have at least some level of animosity towards him. And that's mostly because of his treatment of Tina. I am in the love-hate camp when it comes to Jimmy Jr. Jimmy Jr. is hilarious. I quote him on a daily basis. I love his friendship with Zeke. I love his dancing. And overall, he's a fun character who can fit into any situation you put him in. But like a Sour Patch Kid, he has his sour moments just as much as he has his sweet moments. His poor treatment of women, his weird jealousy towards Gene, and overall his very self-centered nature are big negatives in his character. Today we are exploring everything about Jimmy Jr. His family, his school life, and his love life are things that we will touch upon in this video. So as always, sit back, relax, as we start to deep dive into Wagstaff's bad boy, Jimmy Pesto Jr. Jimmy Jr. is the oldest of three kids. If you're familiar with the show, you already are very familiar with the hair licking duo Andy and Ollie, his younger twin brothers. Jimmy Jr. is the son of Jimmy Pesto, Bob's arch nemesis across the street from Bob's Burgers. He also has a mom too, but she has not appeared on the show as of yet. Starting off, let's talk about his relationship with his little brothers. To be honest, it's almost non-existent. Jimmy Jr. doesn't really connect with his little brothers. Jimmy was more emotional when he did his little fish program with Arnold than he's ever been with Andy and Ollie. I feel like this is one of Jimmy Jr.'s most underdeveloped relationships in the show. He hardly even acknowledges his brother's existence at all. I didn't really notice that he barely even talks about his brothers until I started writing this video. It's a stark contrast to how close the Belcher children are. Now you could say four year age difference could play a part in this. And yeah, he doesn't really have a lot in common with two nine year old boys. However, he has almost no connection to them at all. He doesn't sit with them at lunch. We don't see them talking in the hallway, and we hardly even see him having a conversation with them. The only time I see Jimmy Jr. interacting with Andy and Ollie is when they're walking home from school. And even then, he's walking with Zeke after school sometimes instead of them. I mean, and sometimes Andy and Ollie is with him when he's participating in Belcher shenanigans, but he doesn't really talk to them. As an older sibling myself, it's weird. It's giving Sebastian Demetrius. <laughs> I get not being close to them, but he barely even brings them up in casual conversation. It's like the writers forget that he's a big brother to two weird twins, which is such a missed opportunity. Think about all the storyline potential between these three. I would love to see how Jimmy Jr. functions as an older brother. I would love to see more about the pesto brother family dynamic, but it seems like the show kind of forgets that they're related until it's convenient. I'm just saying, if you can't make a compilation of Jimmy Jr.'s big brother moments, then something's off. Despite that oversight, there are two pieces of dialogue so far that gives us insight into Jimmy Jr.'s feelings about his brothers. One is in a recent season, where Jimmy says how he used to prank Andy and Ollie by pretending they were one person, and that the other was imaginary, which apparently kind of freaked both of them out for a while. The other piece of dialogue is when he expressed some jealousy about not having a twin himself. He said, that it was a ripoff that he didn't have someone who looks like him. I think that this can suggest that Jimmy Jr. feels lonely at home. Andy and Ollie are disturbingly close. Seeing them have this special connection makes him feel left out in a way. He also wants a connection like that. I don't know why, but he wants it. The thing is, he already does have a connection like that. His connection with Zeke is incredibly close and very much like a brother relationship, which is probably why he holds on to Zeke so tightly and is constantly looking for Zeke's approval. But still, to Jimmy, he wishes that he had that connection at home like Andy and Ollie has. I do think that Jimmy should at least try to connect with his little brothers. Sure, they are very weird, but they kind of have the right to be the way they are. Jimmy Pesto is not a great dad and overall finds them weird. They don't live with their mother anymore, so I'm sure they miss her. And their older brother is very distant with them. 
Of course, Andy and Ollie are codependent with each other. They probably feel like all they have is each other. You saw how distressed they were when Mr. Fran tried to separate them for a simple field trip. They feel like they need each other. Is it unhealthy to be unable to leave each other's side? Yeah. However, if that's what they have to do to cope with having a broken, disinterested family, then it's understandable. They may be weird, but they're trying their best to be happy in a very unhappy environment. So Jimmy should make more of an effort to be there for his brothers in any way he can, or at least check up on them to make sure that they're okay. He's in the same exact situation as them, so he should be able to offer valuable advice to help them deal with the family situation. Anyways, Jimmy may feel animosity towards them because they have each other at all times. He views himself as being alone and misunderstood, and he doesn't think that it's fair. At least he has his pet turtle to keep him company. We haven't seen the turtle in question, but I bet it's cute. I won the turtle when I was younger. I kind of still do. Moving on from his brothers, let's talk about Jimmy Jr.'s parents. Let's start with his mom first. His mom is nameless and faceless, but she is in fact alive and active in Jimmy Jr.'s life. From what we heard from Jimmy, she divorced Jimmy Pesto and is now dating a guy named Alan. Oh, and she takes Jimmy Jr. to dance classes sometimes. To be honest, that's all we know about her. She does normal parent stuff, but there's nothing else to say about someone who has, at this point, never appeared on the show. This may change in the future. We recently met Rudy's mom, for example, so there is hope. But for now, there's not much to say about her. She had enough sense to divorce Jimmy Pesto, so she can't be all that bad. But then again, she married him, so... It's a toss up there. Now let's move on to the complicated relationship between Jimmy Pesto Sr. and Jimmy Pesto Jr. Jimmy Pesto is not a very loving or emotionally available dad. Sure, he takes them on vacations and makes a decent living to have a nice apartment, but he's still not a great dad. I mean, just take a look at Jimmy Pesto's apartment. It reads more as a bachelor pad than a guy with three kids living there. Jimmy Pesto isn't very open with his feelings, which serves as a foil for Bob, who is very open and honest with his kids about emotions. Jimmy has a hard time saying that he loves his kids, and instead is more comfortable being cynical to them. Despite his treatment of Andy and Ollie, they still love him very much. Even after he would leave them in the car for hours at a time while he was in a motel room visiting ladies of the night. He left them in the motel parking lot so much that they knew the motel owner by name, which is sad when you really think about it. They are way too young to register what's going on, but when they get older, this is likely to come up in therapy. Even worse, in the episode The Bell Cheese, he even forgot that he had the kids for the weekend and didn't even know that they snuck out to an abandoned taffy factory, which was set to be blown up by the way. Jimmy Jr. and Jimmy Pesto on the other hand have a notably rocky relationship. Jimmy Pesto is not supportive of Jimmy Jr.'s dancing. In fact, he's embarrassed by it, just like he's embarrassed by Andy and Ollie in general. I mean, he even told Trev that he was the son he never had in front of his three sons. So it's safe to say that Jimmy is a jerk to even his own kids. Jimmy Jr. is very vocal about how Jimmy Pesto is the source of his angst. Jimmy Jr. feels misunderstood and judged by his father. His father does not respect his passion for dancing at all and has made it very known to Jimmy Jr. Jimmy Jr. also dislikes going to speech therapy for his speech impediment, but Jimmy Pesto makes him go anyway. Jimmy has expressed how he feels like his dad is trying to turn him into him. Jimmy Jr. wants to be his own person, but Jimmy Pesto is more concerned about making Jimmy Jr. more quote unquote normal. Jimmy Jr. is constantly shown to fight with his dad and pleading for him to understand him. However, Jimmy Pesto is stubborn and unempathetic. It's unlikely that Jimmy Pesto would change his opinion about how Jimmy Jr. expresses himself, which is not much of a surprise. Jimmy Pesto does not respect art in any form. <laughs> he doesn't even respect culinary art or mixology, considering he puts no effort into the poor food and drink quality in his restaurant. He doesn't respect any of the art festivals going on in town and actively calls artsy people freaks. So of course, he would be judgmental on Jimmy Jr.'s dancing. And since dancing is how Jimmy Jr. expresses himself, this is a big issue in their relationship. Dancing is important to Jimmy Jr. and to have his dad discredit his hobby on a daily basis can be frustrating to him. And because they live and work together, Jimmy Jr. has to deal with this every single day. Another point I want to bring up about Jimmy Pesto is his womanizing tendencies. Jimmy Pesto is someone who can be described as low-key a bigot. 
And I say low key because he's smart enough not to be too vocal about his opinions. However, you can tell by the way he talks about people who are different that he's not very open minded. His misogyny should also be no surprise. We do not know why his wife divorced him, but I do think that the most likely scenario would involve cheating. I'd already mentioned how Jimmy Pesto would leave his kids in the car while he has one night stand. Who knows if he included Jimmy Jr. in it when he was younger? We also find out in the very first episode that Jimmy Pesto is in that he was a known member of the fetish club called the Desire Dungeon and likes to be called Baby Num Num, which normally wouldn't be anybody else's business. However, I do think that this combined in context with his character paints a picture of Jimmy Pesto prioritizing his desires over taking care of his kids. Jimmy Pesto was likely treating his wife badly. He was probably constantly leaving the house at night to go to the Desire Dungeon. And when he couldn't get rid of his kids, he would leave them in the car while he goes to the motel and gets stepped on by a lady in leather boots. Jimmy Pesto has never set a good example when it comes to anything in his life. However, I do think that him being a bad role model as a husband and his lack of boundaries with involving his kids in his sex life really warped Jimmy Jr.'s perception of relationships and romance. I'm sure at one point, Jimmy Jr. eventually figured out that his dad wasn't taking naps in that hotel room and instead was probably getting the red light special from a T-Boss impersonator. And if Jimmy's dad was unfaithful to his mother, which is likely, then that would just add another layer of issues for Jimmy Jr. to deal with. It's my theory that Jimmy Pesto being a bad role model bleeds into Jimmy Jr.'s commitment issues with Tina. Jimmy Jr.'s poor treatment of Tina could be a reflection of what Jimmy Pesto has modeled to him on how women should be treated. Jimmy Jr. watched his dad treat women poorly or treat them as a sexual object all his life. So it makes sense that Jimmy Jr. is a heartbreaker himself. Is that an excuse? Of course not. But we can see where the behavior comes from. It doesn't make it right, but it helps us understand his character. Jimmy Jr. is unintentionally repeating the toxic cycle of his dad, which is ironic because Jimmy Jr. wants to be nothing like his dad. Generational trauma has a funny way of showing up. We will get into Jimmy Jr.'s love life in a little bit, but for now, let's wrap up this Jimmy Pesto segment. The point I'm trying to make is that Jimmy Jr. feels lonely and unsupported at home. We have no idea what his life is with his mother, but I doubt that she can undo all the damage on the weekends that Jimmy Pesto does on a daily basis. I assume he lives with Jimmy Pesto because he lives so close to the school and he probably didn't want to change goals. I'm guessing, I don't know. Jimmy Pesto is constantly criticizing Jimmy Jr. for just being himself, which is probably why Jimmy Jr. is so sensitive about being criticized in any way. Jimmy Pesto is also always dragging Jimmy Jr. into his conflicts with Bob. And worst of all, he hardly supports Jimmy or even goes to support Jimmy Jr.'s performances at school. Bob and Linda make an effort to attend all their kids' events, no matter how big or small. Jean's table setting competition, Tina's various plays or Thunder Girl events, Louisa's science fair, or even Jean's cheer competition. I can make a long list of events that Bob and Linda has been involved in. They're even involved in the PTA and volunteer for chaperoning field trips. They are very active in their kids' lives. I can only remember one time when Jimmy Pesto actually showed up to Jimmy Jr.'s play in the Work Hard or Die Trying episode. And even then, he left early to go watch Jean's protest play. At least he told Jimmy Jr. that he was doing a good job as he backed out of the room. But I guess on the bright side, Jimmy Jr. seemed happy with that little good job from his dad. All Jimmy Jr. really wants is his dad to understand him or at least support him in what he does. So yes, while Jimmy Jr. is more well off than the Belchers or Zeke financially, he's not happy at home. Maybe that's why Jimmy Jr. is usually trying to find something to do after school instead of going home. He's often hanging out with Zeke or just hanging around the Wonder Wharf. Even though things aren't very good at home, things are actually great at school for Jimmy Jr. So let's move on to talking about Jimmy Jr.'s life at Wagstaff. While his home life may suck, his school life is actually really nice. He may be lonely at home, but at school, Jimmy Jr. has a lot of friends. Not only does he have his best friend Zeke, he also has Jocelyn, Tammy, and Tina as his main crew. And outside of them, Jimmy Jr. is popular among all grade levels. When Jimmy Jr. was running for president, everyone was going to vote for him. That was until Louise kind of ruined his campaign. I think people in Wagstaff like Jimmy because yes, he's a cool popular kid, but he's also relatively friendly. If you say hi to him, he'll probably say hi back no matter who you are. Unlike Tammy, Jimmy Jr. isn't really a bully. 
He doesn't pick on kids or make fun of people, which I know is a low bar, but it probably attributes to why people feel more positively about him. Jimmy Jr. is cool because he's generally accepting to those around him. Now, I'm not saying that he's like this sweet angel. He does have his moments where he could be rude or dismissive to people, especially to Tina. However, as an everyday person, Jimmy Jr. is relatively nice. Jimmy is very active when it comes to school activities. He has been in multiple plays and productions. Anything involving singing and dancing, he's likely to be in. He's also creative in his own way, like when he and Zeke wrote the new school anthem, or who could forget his famous museums. Like I said earlier, he was willing to be class president so that he could carry the music to school dances. Jimmy just gets along with most people. Who wouldn't want to be friends with someone who loves Footloose, 27 Dresses, and Dirty Dancing? He also wants to watch The Good Life to learn about life, so I guess he has good taste. <laughs> he may swallow pistachios whole like a pelican, but we could see why people want to hang out with him. As I said earlier, his main crew is Tammy, Jocelyn, Zeke, and Tina. His relationship with Tammy and Jocelyn is pretty standard. They just hang out together. There's nothing special about their friendship. They invite him to hang out both inside and outside of school, and that's about it. With that being said, when it comes to Tammy's mean girl behavior, Jimmy is often just a bystander. He doesn't usually participate in her bullying, but he doesn't step in or tell her to stop either. He just watches her do it most of the time and adds some colorful commentary sometimes, which is where fans could get annoyed with Jimmy Jr. Jimmy Jr. claims to dislike bullies, but actively hangs out with someone who is in fact a bully. So this is where his morals start to become less defined as a character, because in a recent episode where Zeke's past bullying as a kid came back to haunt him, Jimmy Jr. was very disappointed in Zeke, rightfully so. However, Zeke has changed as a person since his bullying days and by the time we as the audience meet Zeke, he's not really a bully at all. He has jerk moments like everybody else, but Zeke is generally a really nice kid. Zeke felt incredibly guilty for what he did to that kid, and he apologized to the guy that he used to bully. It was a really nice episode. However, while it's a great episode for Zeke because he apologized and took accountability, it also makes Jimmy Jr. look like a hypocrite. Where was Jimmy Jr.'s anti-bullying stance when Tammy is constantly degrading and bullying Tina? Why is he only holding Zeke accountable when throughout the entire series, we hardly ever see him stick up for anyone. We will see Zeke defending people or backing someone up all the time, but again, Jimmy is usually just a bystander. If it doesn't affect Jimmy, he doesn't really care. So yeah, Jimmy Jr. is a nice kid, but he's nice in a way that's surface level. He'll say hi to you in the hallway, but he probably won't get your name right. Whereas Zeke is genuinely a nice person who will help you out of a jam if you ask him to. So Jimmy Jr. is more superficially nice, whereas someone like Zeke is more genuine. Speaking of our favorite bromance, let's take a minute to talk about Zeke and Jimmy Jr.'s rather passionate friendship. If you're familiar with my channel, you guys know I love Zeke. Zeke was actually my very first Bob's Burger video essay I did on my channel. It's actually one of my most popular videos apparently, so it's safe to say that Zeke is a fan favorite. Jimmy and Zeke have a very close relationship. As I said earlier, Jimmy feels lonely at home. However, Zeke is the one person that Jimmy loves to death. He hardly ever speaks to his brothers, but he's almost always with Zeke. Jimmy's admiration for Zeke feels like a little brother who would do anything and everything with their older brother. It's clear that Jimmy looks up to Zeke and tries to oppress him all the time. If Zeke has a strong opinion on something, Jimmy would immediately change his opinion to agree with Zeke. If Zeke wants to do something, like go on a hunt for a two-butted goat, then Jimmy Jr. will go too, even if he doesn't really want to. When Zeke got detention, Jimmy asked for detention too. When Zeke got scared at the haunted house, Jimmy got scared too to make him feel better. Jimmy will follow Zeke to the end of the earth. It's not one-sided though. Zeke is Jimmy Jr.'s dedicated hype man. The support that Jimmy doesn't get at home, Zeke gives it tenfold. Zeke has that pure, unconditional, supportive energy that Jimmy Jr. craves from his dad. Anything Jimmy Jr. wants to do, Zeke will support him all the way. Zeke even did a couple of plays with Jimmy Jr., even though Zeke isn't great at performance arts. Zeke is always with Jimmy Jr. They hang out all day in school and hang out all the time outside of school. They ride bikes together, they take specific classes or clubs together, and they eat lunch together all the time. There is no separating these two. 
That's why Tina gets annoyed with Zeke. Whenever Tina wants alone time with Jimmy, Zeke is usually included. Half the time, the only reason Jimmy is going at all is because Zeke wants to hang out with the Belcher kids. So honestly, Tina should be glad that Zeke is bringing Jimmy Jr. around so much because Jimmy would not really be coming for the most part of his own free will. If you don't include Zeke, then Jimmy Jr. is likely not to go. However, this doesn't mean that Jimmy and Zeke's relationship is perfect. Just like sometimes Jimmy Jr. does things only because Zeke wants to do something, Zeke sometimes does the same. Like when Jimmy Jr. wants to play Gaga Ball, Zeke did it with him, even though secretly Zeke hated doing the Gaga Ball thing. However, he was too embarrassed to tell Jimmy and instead resorted to hiding during recess instead of telling Jimmy the truth. So both of them have a habit of not being fully honest with each other. They both feel pressure to agree with each other or do the same things together. This most likely stems from not wanting to hurt the other person's feelings. However, between the two of them, Zeke is definitely the more honest one. If it's something that he feels strongly about, he won't lie about his opinion. When Zeke wants to do something, he has no problem doing it alone without Jimmy Jr. When the Belchers ask him to help get revenge for Gene or go people watching or honestly whatever, Zeke is down to have fun with them with or without Jimmy Jr. Zeke doesn't mind going it alone. Jimmy Jr. on the other hand is more codependent. Codependency must run into family, I swear to God. Jimmy Jr. can get very jealous of anyone who gets too close to Zeke and is rather possessive of Zeke's time. Jimmy Jr. specifically gets annoyed with how close Zeke is with Gene. He doesn't like how well they get along. The thing about Zeke is that he's just as popular and cool as Jimmy Jr. Everybody loves Zeke. However, Gene and Zeke have a special bond. For some reason, Zeke adopted Gene and is protective over him. Zeke is a fan of Gene's energy and authenticity. Gene is 100% himself at all times and doesn't care what anyone else thinks. And I think Zeke really admires that, which annoys Jimmy to no end. Not to mention Zeke's friendship with Tina has a lot of underlying romance subtext between them, mostly from Zeke's end. This hasn't caused much issues between him and Jimmy because Jimmy has no idea that Zeke has a crush on Tina. And if you want to know more about that, then again, check out my Zeke video. It's a little old, but you know, it still gets the point across. But in short, Zeke even said himself that one day he's going to marry Tina. He told that to Tina directly when Jimmy Jr. was nowhere in sight. Now, Zeke may tell you a joke, but he'll never tell you a lie. I'm bringing this up because Zeke does get annoyed with how Jimmy treats Tina sometimes. Zeke is over here fantasizing about dates and weddings, while Jimmy Jr. is over here doing below the bare minimum with Tina. Zeke has told Tina that Jimmy Jr. takes her for granted, and I'm sure most of the audience agrees with the sentiment. So I do think that Zeke does resent the fact that Jimmy is just toying with Tina when he knows for a fact that he could treat her better. However, I doubt Zeke will ever risk their friendship by saying that. Zeke would do nothing to hurt Jimmy Jr. and always puts Jimmy Jr. first. So he'd rather keep his feelings to himself than be honest with Jimmy about his feelings towards Tina. To Zeke, some things are better left buried. Despite their underlying issues, these two are close like brothers. These boys will support each other tenfold no matter what. They hype each other up and will be there for each other in times of need. We saw how crushed they were when Zeke thought he was getting sent away in the episode Yes Without My Zeke. They were devastated at the thought of being separated. On a daily basis, these two always laugh at each other's jokes and are always horse playing. Even though Jimmy always looks like he's fighting for his life when he's wrestling with Zeke, he's still having fun. This is by far Jimmy Jr.'s healthiest and most genuine relationship in a the show. They have such a pure, wholesome relationship that is good for both of their lives. They're the definition of twin flames and it's rather adorable. I can see why there's so many Zeke ex Jimmy Jr. shippers out there. The shipping material is strong with this one, so I can't blame y'all. Now, with that sweet part of the video over, <laughs> let's talk about the train wreck that is Jimmy Jr.'s love life. This is by far where some of Jimmy Jr.'s worst traits come out. So let's dive into this absolute mess. By himself, Jimmy Jr. is a really funny character. People love his humor, his dance moves, and his deep love for Zeke. So you might be confused on why I said that most people do not like him or at the very least have a love-hate relationship with him. Well, it has to do with his playboy attitude. Jimmy Jr. is the definition of a nonchalant guy who will put in no effort in his romantic relationships. When the plot doesn't involve Jimmy Jr.'s love life, he is very likable and very funny. 
However, ironically, all of his worst and best episodes do involve his love life. Like I said earlier, he has really high highs in the series where he's being a very sweet guy. However, the majority of the time, he is a really, really bad love interest for Tina. The show acknowledges that Jim Jr. is a jerk who strings Tina along. Everyone around Tina is literally begging for her to consider other guys. Even her entire family is tired of the constant Jimmy Jr. drama. Jimmy wrecks Tina's self-confidence and sometimes reduces her to a puddle on the couch. But every now and then, they get a very cute moment. However, most people feel like Jimmy Jr. at the end of the day brings more bad moments than good to Tina. In my opinion, he's more trouble than what he's worth. Josh and Zeke are way better matches for Tina. Hell, even Daryl, Jordan, and Henry treated her better in their one episodes of dating her than Jimmy Jr. has treated her throughout the series. So even though I find Jimmy hilarious, in my opinion, he's just a bad match for Tina. At least for now. Maybe when he's older, he'll be better. But right now, we're talking about currently in the show. Not about potential. We don't do potential man over here. As always, I will try to remain as fair as possible in this video to Jimmy Jr. I am not going to discredit the Jimmy Jr. Tina shippers out there. So I'm going to break this discussion into his sweet moments and his sour moments in honor of me constantly calling Jimmy Jr. a sour patch kid because like the candy, he is very much sour, sweet, and gone. So let's talk about the sweet side of Jimmy Jr. first. Jimmy and Tina are normally very friendly with each other. I would consider them to be good friends for the most part. Jimmy, for the most part, doesn't make fun of her or participate in the bullying of her. Jimmy Jr. even helps her out sometimes. Like when Tina had her skirt tucked into her underwear, he let her know so she could fix it. Zeke and Jimmy do try to include Tina in her teen hangouts, even if Tammy would rather not invite her. Jimmy was the one who invited her to the hayride and even invited her to watch his dance lessons with Zeke. And when he was feeling down in that episode, Tina gave him a pep talk and inspired him not to give up on dancing. Jimmy was also very grateful to Tina when she helped Zeke with his moving away crisis. Jimmy listens to her point of view and sometimes would even change his mind. Like when Tina brought up that the managers in her entrepreneurship class wasn't helping, he was the one who suggested switching jobs to make it fairer for everyone. In general, Jimmy doesn't mind having Tina around and tries to make her feel included in our teen hangouts. Jimmy often hangs around the Belcher kids and gets involved in our projects as well. Even though Jean and Louise really don't like him, they do invite him in on their activities, whether it's watching a scary movie, doing the ice rink matches in the freezer, helping film a zombie movie, doing Tina's Thanksgiving play, or even overlooking the nude beach, Jimmy is usually there to participate in the madness. So as a friend, I would say Jimmy Jr. is a fun person to have around. He's usually down for whatever as long as Zeke's there too. And when Tina needed help, Jimmy Jr. was in the rescue party to go save her for being stuck on the mountain. So he is good people when it counts. Now let's talk more specifically about the romance. They have had some good moments in the series. Whenever Jimmy Jr. decides to care about Tina, he could be very thoughtful and sweet. When he wanted to do a sky kiss, the person he wanted to do it with was Tina. And when she couldn't do it because of her diarrhea troubles, he was bummed. Thankfully, they still got to do the sky kiss with her on stilts. And honestly, it was a cute moment. Another cute moment is when Tina's goose friend, Bruce, was stuck on the bleachers. Jimmy Jr. climbed up and got all scratched up and bitten, helping Bruce the goose get free before Fran called animal control on him. He was sore and didn't really have to do it, but he risked getting rabies because Tina was upset. It was adorable, not gonna lie. There was also that time when he took her and Louise to pie in the sky for a date. Granted, he only took her because Tina couldn't talk in that episode and Louise was translating for her because she bit her tongue. He basically only asked her out because he thought Tina was being mean to him through Louise's bad translations. But at least he took her to a very nice place for once. Plus, Jimmy had a very cute speech at the end of the episode saying that he wanted to have a nice relaxing date with her without Louise messing it up. One of my favorite moments with Jimmy was when Valentine's Day came around and Tina was working the flower booth. Jimmy Jr. wanted to get her a flower, but he wanted it to be a surprise. While everybody else in school got a carnation from the table, he went out and got her a rose. It was genuinely a thoughtful act of kindness that for once Tina didn't have to beg him for. 
I mean, technically she did kept hinting to him to get her a flower, but she wasn't begging like she usually does. So a win is a win. <laughs> Also, in a recent episode, he took her out to Froyo, unprovoked. Granted, he picked April Fool's Day to do it, which wasn't the best timing, but the thought was there. Jimmy also doesn't mind apologizing when he does something wrong. When he broke her porcelain horse, he was apologetic and said sorry to porcelain. When he messed up her parade float, he apologized for doing it. There are a lot of examples of him apologizing for hurting her feelings or messing up. I just wish that he didn't mess up so often. <laughs> Overall, when Jimmy Jr. is showing his sweet side, they have potential. They share quite a few sweet moments throughout the series. It may be few and far between, but it happens. Tina supports Jimmy Jr. all the time through all of his activities, especially his dancing. He doesn't appreciate it most of the time, but Tina does it anyway. Now, that may seem like a short list of good, but in my defense, I've tried to look for more moments between them that were nice from start to finish. However, Jimmy is again more bad than good. He's a good friend for the most part, but when it involves romance, he can be rather irritating. So with that being said, let's move on to his sour moments. Okay, so here's the deal. Jimmy Jr. is more often than not horrible to Tina. Their relationship is toxic and for the most part very one-sided. Tina is the one who has to hint that she wants Jimmy Jr. to ask her out or she's the one constantly setting up dates with him. Most of the time he brushes her off or says no or sometimes he even drags his feet on giving her a definitive answer. Jimmy Jr. and Tina get into a lot of fights in the series. Like when Tina wanted to run the marathon with him, he basically implied that she couldn't keep up with him, which I have to admit led to an absolutely hilarious race between them. And the fact that he fake apologized just so that she can slow down enough for him to try to pass her is just so funny. But it was a jerk move and I'm glad she beat him. But that race is definitely one of my favorite Jimmy Jr. moments in the show. But again, jerk move. The thing about Jimmy Jr. is that he's very hot and cold with her. He will ignore her or leave her hanging for days without feeling bad about it. He is very comfortable with stringing her along. The only times when he seems to be interested in Tina is when she's being mean to him or when she's going out with another guy. Let me just give you a small list of Jimmy Jr. completely ignoring Tina but suddenly got interested in her because she was with another guy. When she fake dated Daryl, he was interested. When she dated Jeff the Ghost, he was interested. When she dated Jordan, Ghost Boy. When he thought Zeke hinted at liking Tina at the apocalypse thing, he looked a little concerned. Or when Zeke told Tina that Jimmy Jr. took her for granted, Jimmy Jr. was upset by that. Or worst of all, when he messed up Tina's relationship with Josh. I will never forgive him for that. Josh was perfect and here comes Jimmy Jr.'s dumb ass to mess it up. In the words of the poet Beyonce, he only wants her when she's not there and he quite literally did call Becky with the good hair and took her out for Valentine's Day, but we'll get back to that in a little bit. Speaking of, let's talk about some of his worst moments. Let's start off with a light one that's more of a mixed bag. There was a time when Jimmy and Tina bonded when she was a robot for a week. Earlier in that episode, he said no to going with Tina to the bonfire dance and barely gave her the time of day. However, when Tina hurt her foot and ended up using a robot to go to school virtually, Jimmy Jr. ended up talking to her. They talked in the closet for hours and ended up bonding more than they've ever had in the entire series. This episode is a bit mixed for me. On one hand, Tina and Jimmy talked for hours and really connected. Well, actually, Jimmy Jr. talked about himself for most of the time and Tina just listened. Either way, it's one of the few times they genuinely connected with each other. Like, Jimmy was actually talking to her. Like, expressing himself. It was weird. We have never seen Jimmy Jr. actually talk to her like that. However, when he saw her in person, he again completely disregarded her and completely ignored that they had these long conversations when she was a robot. Eventually, he did ask her to the bonfire. But it turns out he wasn't asking Tina, he was asking the robot. Like boy, if you don't... <laughs> he even kissed the robot at the party with the whole family watching. This was the infamous Muzoms episode, which has some of my favorite Jimmy Jr. quotes in the entire show. At the end of the episode, Tina ends up going to the beach in person and supports him instead of doing it through the robot. They did end up kissing at the end and it was a nice ending. 
My issue with Jimmy in this episode is that he never really apologized for how he treated her in person. Tina did nothing but listen and support him throughout the entire episode. However, he was more interested in dating the robot version of Tina than Tina herself. He saw the novelty of having a robot girlfriend, but kind of just ignored Tina in the process, which was so weird. So for me, this episode is sour with some sweet moments mixed in. Also, I can't help but think he fell in love with the robot version of Tina because there's this distance built in with him dating a robot. Kind of like people falling in love over the internet, but in person, they may not connect very well. Again, it lines up with his commitment issues. Jimmy Jr. is just not that into her. He seems to have no interest in Tina as a person or interest in finding out things that she likes to do. He likes the spicy side of her, but that's when Tina is acting out of character. Jimmy Jr. usually finds Tina dull. When Tammy called Tina bland and boring, Jimmy Jr. actually agreed with her and said it was kind of true. Boys like Jimmy Jr. only want love when it's torture. Tina can't be herself with him. Tina has a naturally dry personality, but she's also very passionate about the things she cares about. Jimmy clearly seems to want someone who's more aggressive or risky. To him, Tina is a safe option and he finds that boring, which is fine. If that's the case, then he should just leave her alone and date someone who fits that description. But does he do that? No, he just does enough to keep her interested, but will never commit to anything concrete. He keeps her in a situationship that only benefits him. Tina is miserable in this arrangement of being on again and off again. However, Jimmy doesn't care and is very inconsiderate about how his actions affect Tina. Another example of how Jimmy mistreats her is in episode Presto Tino. In this episode, Tina volunteered to be Jimmy Jr.'s magic assistant. Tina wanted to work on magic, but Jimmy Jr. was being super defensive and sensitive about her trying to help. Not only was he rude to her for no reason, but he also fired her and replaced her with Tammy because he didn't like being told what to do. They ended up working together after Tina got her revenge and Jimmy apologized. However, he was such a jerk in this episode. He was openly antagonizing her throughout the entire episode for absolutely no reason, all because he couldn't take the smallest criticism about his magic act. Even after the whole apology, he left her on stage looking stupid at the end of the episode when she tried to lean in for a kiss and he just whisked away. But that is nothing compared to Jimmy Jr.'s worst Valentine episode. In the episode V is for Valendetta, Jimmy Jr. was truly at his worst with Tina. Tina made Jimmy Jr. a picture frame for Valentine's Day. However, not only did he choose another girl to be his Valentine instead of Tina, but he also used the same picture frame that Tina made him and put a picture of Becky in it. Becky was the girl he asked out instead because she got her braces taken off and now she's Miss Thing according to Jean. That level of audacity is insane. Why would he accept a Valentine's gift from Tina, but then turn around and go out with somebody else? Then use that said gift for a picture of another girl. Insanity. The worst part is that Jimmy Jr. didn't even have the guts to tell Tina or give her a heads up about him going on a date with Becky. Tina found out on accident through the grapevine that he was going out with another girl. And it doesn't even stop there. Throughout his date, he didn't even treat Becky right the entire night. He picked her up three hours late, kept calling her Betsy, and had the nerve to break up with her mid-date before they even got the dessert. Then had the nerve to say, if you insist, I will hang for the flan. Sir. <laughs> then right after he broke up with poor Becky, making her cry in public on Valentine's Day, he still had the nerve, the gall, the audacity, to ask Tina out in Becky's face, saying I'll go out with you instead. Like boy bye, truly one of Jimmy Jr's worst episodes. Thankfully, both girls left him by himself in the restaurant, but he was too self-centered to see why his actions were so egregious. He was truly awful in that episode to both Becky and Tina. Every time I watch that episode, he just pisses me off every freaking time. If you thought that was bad, I didn't even touch on the Josh situation. I think I want to talk about Josh in a separate video. I have a lot to say about him and his journey throughout the show. He's only been on three episodes, I think, but Josh was really a star from day one. Basically, Jimmy Jr. didn't want to take Tina to a dance and instead wanted to keep his options open, as always. On the other hand, Josh asked Tina if she wanted to go with him to his school dance. 
Tina asked if he wanted to consider his other options and he was like, no, of course, I just want to go with you. King! He only asked Tina. Jimmy then got insanely jealous when Tina decided to go with Josh instead to the dance. Jimmy then worked overtime to try to break them up and win Tina back. And in the end, Tina didn't get either one of them because she just couldn't choose. Tina for sure fumbled so hard in this episode, but again, I will talk about that in a Josh video. My point is, she wasn't even on Jimmy Jr's radar until another guy was interested in Tina. Then all of a sudden, he was singing in a horse costume, professing his love. All so he can go back to ignoring her right after this episode. And Josh pretty much left the situation altogether. I cannot stand Jimmy Jr in that episode, and I feel like most people who watched that episode felt the same. There are so many reasons that Jimmy Jr. is not a good match for Tina. For one, he knows nothing about her. When asked where he would take Tina for a date, this guy said the gas station. <laughs> you would think he'd know by now, considering they went out on multiple dates by this point. Even Zeke rolled his eyes at the answer. Zeke knew Tina well enough to know that she would like to go to the touch tank at the aquarium, which is very specific to Tina because nobody in that town liked that damn touch tank. The fact that Zeke knew Tina better than Jimmy Jr. is honestly very embarrassing. Also, Jimmy hardly stands up for Tina. He's very wishy-washy and his feelings change from episode to episode. He's just generally very inconsistent and inconsiderate. He doesn't care how he makes Tina feel when he both refuses to commit and at the same time refuses to fully let her go on to date other people. Jimmy Jr. wants what he can't have. Jimmy likes to chase but ignores it when it's right in front of him. Maybe it's because he's used to chasing his dad's love, so in a way he believes this is how love works. Jimmy Pesto has modeled this poor behavior to Jimmy, and Tina is the one suffering the consequences of his poor parenting. Jimmy Jr. likes being desired and hates being ignored, which is how we get this dynamic to begin with. Honestly, I think it comes down to the writer's hesitation to fully commit to them or not. Tina's love for boys is a big part of her personality, especially her love for Jimmy Jr. However, we are now on season 14. It's getting a little old by now. It's the same situation ship over and over again without any new love rivals to balance it out. For example, in the movie, her storyline was just getting Jimmy Jr. to be her summer boyfriend. But currently in the new season, Tina is back single. So what was the point of having that storyline to begin with in the movie? We could have had other storylines instead of that one if it wasn't going to actually stick. I feel like this dynamic just needs to change. Not only is it getting boring, but it brings out the worst in Jimmy Jr's character. This back and forth is what causes fans to hate Jimmy and ship Tina with other people. Hell, even Teddy, who was known to be single and lonely for the majority of the series, recently gotten into a steady relationship for once with Kathleen. Teddy's relationship with Kathleen is a nice change to the status quo. Henry went from being ignored by his peers to having a sweet relationship with Sesmita. This shows that the show is willing to change. The show just needs to make up its mind though. I wish that their situation would go through some type of change. I don't know what, but just something. This dynamic makes people feel more negatively towards Jimmy Jr. At the end of the day, his sweet moments just don't balance out all the bad moments in the show. Worst of all, Jimmy just doesn't get called out for his behavior a lot in the show and doesn't really suffer any consequences when it comes to his behavior with girls. He's constantly playing with Tina's emotions. Jimmy only cares for Tina on his terms. She has to wait for him to be in the mood to be romantic. Nothing is ever on Tina's terms. The ball is always in Jimmy's court. She's always changing herself and doing things to get Jimmy Jr's attention, but does he ever do anything for Tina? Not really. It's a very imbalanced relationship where Jimmy has all the power and Tina has to wait for his affection. Tina needs to know her worth. Getting treated like a safe backup option is not okay. She shouldn't be so willing to always accept a soft maybe rather than just a full yes. Tina is the reliable girl who will be there whenever he wants his ego boosted. And trust me, you never want to be that girl. So to wrap up this sour section, I'll just say this. Do I think Jimmy Jr. likes Tina? Well, yeah. He likes her, but I just don't know if he actually like likes her. He likes the attention. He likes the support. He likes what she gives him emotionally. 
like i said they're good friends so he likes her on at least a friendship level but he doesn't value her at least not romantically jimmy can honestly take her or leave her at this point he has more love and passion for zeke than he's ever had for tina like ever if you told me that all along he loves zeke then i would believe you tina just feels like she's easily accessible and a safe option i think that he likes her but not romantically if that makes sense and honestly with jimmy jr it's not just tina in the show he's never shown to sincerely like a girl or have any enthusiasm with dating girls he's very nonchalant about dating and it's to the point where fans have speculated about his sexuality i'm not really the one to assume anything until it's explicitly stated on the show and sometimes biases and stereotypes can come up to play when we talk about a character's sexuality. However, if it turned out that Jimmy Jr. was bi or even ace or aromantic, then I would believe it because he just doesn't seem that interested in romance. Like I've hardly ever seen him enthusiastically date anybody. Like you don't see Jimmy Jr. in love. You don't see him flirting with girls. You don't see him like having a major crush. Like with Rudy, you see his crush on Chloe. You see other characters in the show have romantic interests, but with Jimmy, it was just never there. So like I said, if it turns out that he was bi or ace or aromantic, then it would be believable considering his character hardly seems to be that interested in dating. Honestly, it seems like Jimmy Jr. is just dating because that's what you're supposed to do, but not dating because it's something that he genuinely wants to do. It feels like Jimmy Jr. kind of dates out of obligation or a social pressure rather than I want to go on a date with X, Y, and Z. You understand what I'm saying? But again, I'm not speculating on his sexuality just because he doesn't like Tina. It could feel like possibly he's just not that into romance or dating. I don't know if it's because he's just not ready for romance. I don't know if it's because he doesn't want to date this girl specifically, or he doesn't really feel romantic attraction, or he could just be a guy who just at the moment is not very interested or ready to date. Anyway, I thought I should mention it regardless because this does have fans speculating about it. Lastly, I already know people are going to defend Jimmy Jr. saying he's only 13, so maybe he's not interested in dating Tina. One, if he's not interested in dating, then he shouldn't be romantically pursuing girls. If he's going to date, he needs to learn how to date responsibly. At this point, he has made a habit of hurting young girls. Why should they suffer for Jimmy Jr.'s immaturity? Girls are not there for Jimmy Jr.'s emotional growth or to be his stepping stone to figure himself out. So I don't think his age is an excuse for how he treats girls. And the thing is, I know that 13 is not a mature age, obviously. However, he's still old enough to be held responsible on some level for the things he does, or at the very least get called out for his actions. And also, I want to point out that Josh is only one year older than Jimmy Jr. and he was a great short-term boyfriend. Hell, Henry is the same age as Jimmy Jr. and he is a good boyfriend to Sesmita. Sesmita is only Henry's second girlfriend. He barely has any dating experience. Yet still, he's over here getting his girlfriend boys for now tickets really hard to get boys for now tickets. Henry wasn't interested in the band, but he wanted to make Sesmita happy. And he went to the concert with her. So don't tell me that Jimmy Jr. is just this clueless boy and he just doesn't know better because other characters that are the same age as him seem to know better than him. Yet Jimmy Jr. is just the one guy who just is clueless. No, I don't buy it. I think Jimmy Jr. on some level knows what he's doing, but he just doesn't care enough to change. In my opinion, I just think that Jimmy shouldn't date right now and just focus on his hobbies, like his dancing or his poems or anything he feels like doing. First, because he's not mature enough or interested in girls enough to be dating. And two, when Jimmy Jr. is actually doing something he likes, he is genuinely happy. Happier than we as an audience have ever seen him be on a date. Like I said, I like Jimmy when the episode is focused on his dancing or his friendship with Zeke. So maybe he should just lay off on the dating for at least a year or two and just focus on things that seem to make him happy. It will be better for him, the fans of the show, and most importantly, Tina. Speaking of our girl Tina, let's take a moment to talk about her before we close out this video. It takes two to tango. While Jimmy is mostly at fault, Tina is not perfect either. 
This dynamic could not exist without Tina's participation. Tina doesn't have the best self-esteem. When it comes to Jimmy Jr., Tina comes off as desperate and obsessive. Not only does she stalk him, but she also steals socks of his or random things for her collection. She had Jimmy Jr.'s socks carefully labeled in her drawer. And Tina also had wet marshmallows from his hot chocolate in her drawer. Like girl. <laughs> her whole mood is dictated by Jimmy Jr. If he's not paying attention to her, Tina's whole world will be crashing down. And usually that will be normal for teens, but Tina's obsession can border on the extreme. Jimmy gets rightfully annoyed by how much Tina is in his face or is following him around school or is stuffing herself in his locker. It will irritate anyone to have someone who just won't leave you alone. Like spying on the boy's locker room is too far in my opinion. Tina also fantasizes about him a lot and Jimmy Jr. is usually included in her erotic friend fiction books that she's usually writing. When Jimmy Jr. is on her good side, he's usually written as a love interest, but occasionally when she's mad at him, she writes him as the villain. The thing is, Jimmy Jr. has treated her poorly, very publicly, yet she refuses to move on from Jimmy or get the hint that he's just not that into her. People treat you how you allow them to, and Jimmy is inconsistent and flaky. He has commitment issues and basically only wants her when she's unavailable. Her obsession with him isn't in the least bit earned. At least Arnold was nice to Helga, so her obsession with Arnold made sense, right? Arnold was like her beacon of hope in a really dark and sad childhood that Helga had. But with Tina, Tina has no reason to be this stressed over Jimmy Jr. She has no reason to be this obsessed with Jimmy Jr. He is nothing special. In fact, he's just the downgraded version of Josh, and I will say that with my whole chest. <laughs> Sometimes Tina would obsessively text Jimmy Jr. constantly or call him constantly. She also has unrealistic expectations of their relationship sometimes. Tina is constantly asking him on dates or reminding him to ask her to a dance or reminding him to buy her flowers. Most of the time, he doesn't really give her an answer regardless on how many times she asks him. Tina hardly even considers anybody else in the school besides Jimmy Jr. Jimmy is Tina's default, while Tina is Jimmy Jr.'s backup plan. She puts all of her eggs into this very poorly made, dirty ass basket. Her entire self-worth depends on Jimmy Jr.'s mood, and that is not a healthy way to live. Both of them are caught in a toxic pattern of a situationship. Tina has responsibility in it too, but again, it's not fully her fault. It is hard for her to get over him or to move on because Jimmy would swoop in whenever she tries to do that. So yes, she is obsessive and yes, she does. She is a stalker pretty much. But every time she tries to break away from Jimmy or go with someone else or date somebody else, he pops right back up and tries to coax her back to his side. When he's jealous, Jimmy Jr. gives her all the attention she wants from him. Then, when she becomes obsessed again because of all that attention, he falls back. And once she's back on the hook, he goes back to ignoring her. That keeps them in the same loop over and over again. This messed up pattern is exactly what caused Tina to lose Josh. Tina kind of used Josh to make Jimmy Jr. jealous and to get the attention that she hardly ever gets from him. Which is a very messed up thing to do to Josh. Josh honestly was kind of right to bow out of that situation because he would have been constantly competing with Jimmy Jr. Josh was the only rival of Jimmy Jr.'s that was an actual threat to Jimmy. Most of Tina's one episode relationships weren't built to last for more than one episode. However, Josh was the only love interest that had an entire arc and could realistically compete with Jimmy Jr. in every aspect. So I feel like that's why a lot of the fan base is attached to Josh. He's like the emotionally mature and kind-hearted version of Jimmy Jr. Plus they're both dancers. Plus he's tall. He's a tall dancer who can lift Tina. Like come on. So yes, it makes sense why the fans love him so much. Since Josh, we haven't gotten another serious contender. We have just had Jimmy Jr., Jimmy Jr., pops of random boys, Jimmy Jr., Jimmy Jr., Jimmy Jr., Jimmy Jr. It feels like the show was kind of locked onto those two as endgame, but the fans are just not. <laughs> They're just not feeling it. Josh was a very special case when it comes to Tina's love interest. So for the show to give up on Josh so easily in favor of continuing this Jimmy Jr. situationship, 
It just felt like a disservice and a bit of a cop out to return to the status quo instead of maybe challenging the narrative that maybe Jimmy Jr. is just not the best option or at the very least he shouldn't be the only option. Jimmy and Tina tend to bring out the worst in each other. Jimmy brings out all of Tina's insecurities and has a huge effect on her self-worth and he also brings out her obsessive and desperate side. Tina on the other hand brings out Jimmy Jr.'s insane jealousy and his desperate need to be chosen over other guys. Jimmy wants to be her number one without any commitment whatsoever. They also bring out the hyper competitiveness in each other and push each other's buttons to the extreme. They aren't really good for each other in the long run. Tina should be with someone who likes her the way she is, someone who can inspire her to love herself more and have more self-confidence. And Jimmy Jr. is just not that person. He has a lot of growing up to do to get to that point and I just don't see that happening, especially in the environment he's being raised in. And Tina has to learn how to have some boundaries and standards. Most importantly, she has to learn to be able to stick to those standards and not change them for anyone, not even Jimmy Jr. Tina also has a lot of growing up to do, but thankfully for her, she has two very loving and supportive parents who can guide her in that journey. If neither one of them change, both of them will be doomed to have a very unfulfilling relationship. It's ironic that her dad, Bob, is deemed one of the best husbands in adult animation. You would think that because she has such a great example of marriage that she would have some level of standards, but sadly she doesn't. Also, I have to say that her treatment of Zeke sometimes is very uncalled for. I feel like Tina is unnecessarily rude to him because he's always with Jimmy Jr. when she wants to spend time with him. The thing is, Zeke is more or less Tina's only real ally in her group of fake ass friends. Zeke is nice to her and has helped her out more than Jimmy Jr. ever has. For example, he was very patient with her during their verbal report and supported her throughout the entire episode. Zeke just doesn't deserve sometimes how Tina talks to him. Zeke doesn't take it personally, but I do think that it's just not a good look for Tina. I'm not saying that she has to be nice to him or has to be like the super sweet person around him, but I think she should ease up on him and not treat him like he's an enemy. It's not his fault that Jimmy Jr. is borderline obsessed with him. Give Zeke a break. <laughs> now I do understand that Tina and Jimmy Jr.'s situation is mostly a problem with the writing in the show. The show refuses to allow Tina to change her opinion on Jimmy Jr. Bob's Burgers is usually not afraid to change the status quo. Relationships in this show evolve all the time. So why should Tina and Jimmy's relationship be any different? I love a good relationship arc. However, between these two, there's no arc. It's just up and down and up and down in a never ending cycle. I would like Tina to date different guys for more than one episode. I wouldn't mind if she dated someone for even like a half a season before breaking up with them for whatever reason. I want Tina to explore other relationships. And I mean really explore those relationships, not a one-off episode. I don't want Jimmy Jr. to be the only guy she ever has a crush on constantly. I wouldn't mind her having another crush on a random guy at school. Or maybe Tina actually does date Jimmy Jr. But after a while, maybe they don't think it works for them and they just remain friends. I'm also open with Tina staying single, of course, but with less Jimmy Jr. obsessive storylines. Or maybe we can finally address this romantic subtext between her and Zeke. I just need some type of change. It's been, what, 14 seasons of going back and forth with these two? Either introduce actual love interests for Tina that are going to last for more than an episode, or just let her be with Jimmy. Just like those lonely Teddy jokes have gotten very stale and they switched it up and gave him a relationship, this dynamic between Jimmy and Tina has officially ran its course for me personally. In conclusion, Jimmy Jr. is a better friend than he is a love interest. When the episode isn't about their romance, Jimmy Jr. is a top tier comedic character. He has all the best lines, he's funny, and he's goofy. I think everyone who loves the show has a favorite Jimmy Jr. saying or a quote that they say every day. Jimmy Jr. is just that funny. Like he's an icon, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope that this video doesn't make it seem like I hate Jimmy Jr. And I will say it very clearly. I do not hate Jimmy Jr. I want him to stay in the show. I just want things to change around his character. I want to see more of his personal life and his family life. 
I want his love life to be a little more consistent or just non-existent. <laughs> Most importantly, I want the show to have more direction when involving his character. Everything about him feels stagnant. Jimmy Jr. has not changed since season one, which is insane. On my channel, I do character arcs a lot. So for me to say that Jimmy Jr. has been the same since season one is a red flag. A lot of characters in the show have shown growth, change, and evolution. However, Jimmy Jr. has remained the same pretty much throughout the entire show. Even Tammy has had a lot of ups and downs and growth and backslides and forwards. Like Tammy's character arc is constantly changing. Zeke was categorized as a troublemaker in the early seasons, but as the season's gone on, Zeke has gotten more kind, more helpful understanding. Most characters in this show have changed since season one, yet it feels like Jimmy Jr. just doesn't go through any type of growth. Thankfully, there's still time to change this dynamic. I love the show and I would love more interesting stories involving Jimmy Jr. This video may have been more negative than positive, but I feel like that's his character in general. A mix between really good moments and really bad. Like I said, a Sour Patch Kid. I want him to be better and I want to learn more about him as a character because he is so funny and he could be a really interesting character if the show gave him a chance to be. I do want him to be more than Tina's love interest. I just want to reiterate to you guys, he's been here since season one, much longer than a lot of characters that I've talked about on his channel. Rudy has rightfully gotten a lot of attention and he has shown a lot of growth and strength throughout the series. He, as a nine-year-old, has more character and more lore than Jimmy Jr. There could be so much more stories that we experience through Jimmy Jr. And hey, if Rudy could have his time to shine in a very beautifully made episode, then other side characters have a chance of growing and changing as well. Jimmy Jr. is a fun person with even funnier catchphrases. Whether he's dancing, watching 20 separate dresses, or wondering if God's name is Todd, Jimmy Jr. is unapologetically himself every step of the way. Jimmy Jr. is a performer who will dazzle everyone with his unique moves and his charm. He may not be everyone's favorite, but it's undoubtable that he will leave an impression on you whether you want to or not. So here's to Jimmy Jr., the Wagstaff bad boy who's willing to footloose his way to your heart. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!